spostarli in Europa. La soluzione è liberare l'Africa da certi europei che la sfruttano. And no more to colonialism that's wearing a disguise of multinational corporations. Si se fa un même les terroristes qui nous tient aujourd'hui, il nous pille. These 14 African countries are currently ablaze with massive protests against France. The protesters are burning their currencies. And the reason for this protest is France's neo-colonialism. Yes, in 2024, France is still the colonial master of these countries. France wields its influence over these nations with an iron grip through the CFA franc currency. <laughs> È la moneta coloniale che la Francia stampa per 14 nazioni africane, alla quale applica, alle quali applica il signoraggio e in forza delle quali sfrutta le risorse di questa nazione. Believe it or not, a staggering 70% of the currency reserves for these 14 countries are locked away in the vaults of the French Treasury. Shockingly, former French President Jacques Chirac openly acknowledged, without Africa, France will slide down into the rank of a third world power. Did you know that the people living in these African countries are actually French citizens? Despite being on another continent, the currency here is still the euro. And not only are they just virtual territories of France, but they also significantly contribute to its economy. Just take France's marine income, for example. These territories contribute around 90% of France's 1.3 billion euros fishery revenue. Moreover, these territories also hold around 60 billion euros worth of oil and gas reserves. Essentially, even today, France's secret African colonies play a crucial role in portraying it as the first world country. But the thing is, when one country is progressing so much, the other countries are obviously being exploited, right? France is a strange case. Most countries are blamed for their colonial policies, but France is also blamed for its post-colonial policies. So how, despite gaining independence from France, these African nations still find themselves enslaved to their former colonizers? The beginning of the story dates back to 1958, just after the Second World War, during Charles de Gaulle's French presidency. At that time, various countries worldwide were liberating themselves from European colonial powers. In line with this wave of independence, a struggle for freedom was also underway in African French colonies. So due to France's weakened economy after the Second World War, they were compelled to grant independence to their African colonies. But the goal was not willing to let go of all power and economic benefits along with their freedom. Therefore, he devised a clever strategy. He virtually granted them independence, but retained economic control in his hands. He stipulated that in exchange for their independence, they must maintain economic ties with France for their development and adopt a special currency system known as CFA franc. So, under the guise of introducing a new currency, France cunningly imposed biased restrictions on these African countries. These restrictions heavily favored France in trade deals and economic matters. This marked the inception of what we now call France's monetary neocolonialism. But behind France's actions, there were two hidden agendas. One political, the other economic. Starting with the political agenda, France did not want any obstacles against its neocolonialism. But of course, some countries such as Guinea and Togo understood France's hidden agenda. And when the leaders of these countries demanded full independence, they were removed. Rebel forces were armed and trained to wreak havoc strategically, plunging these countries into chaos. But it didn't stop there. France went full throttle, flooding their economies with fake currency to destroy their economy entirely. And when that still wasn't enough, they resorted to the ultimate act, the assassination of the president. The best example of this is Togo. And let me tell you, this isn't some hidden conspiracy. A former African continent minister openly admitted to it. The main reason behind making such cruel decisions was simply France's desire to maintain control over African countries. To solidify this control, France conducted military interventions in Africa 122 times between 1960 and 1990, doing everything possible to destabilize countries that rebelled against its authority. So, military and political intervention became a means of direct control. But France also bolstered its grip through the CFA franc currency. In 1945, France introduced a currency called the French Colonies of Africa, CFA franc in its African colonies. Then, in 1960, these 14 countries were split into two currency zones. The West African CFA franc was imposed on eight countries, while the Central African CFA franc was implemented in the remaining six. Afterwards, France's real game began. 
While providing new currencies to African nations, it ensured that control remained firmly in its own hands. France, playing very cleverly, had deposited the 100% foreign exchange reserves of these 14 countries into the French treasury. It means these countries had absolutely zero importing capacity. But in 2005, France reduced the deposit limit to 70% to maintain a good image in the world. And to date, the situation remains the same. Now, controlling reserves was not enough. France, by offering the temptation of fixed exchange rates, permanently pegged the CFA to the French franc, making Africa heavily dependent on itself. France said the reason behind this deal was to foster development and intra-trade in the region. However, in 1999, France joined the EU, leading to the demonetization of the French franc and the adoption of the euro as the currency. Subsequently, France pegged the exchange rate of the CFA currency to the euro. Now, you can observe the impact of this decision today, as the value of the CFA against the euro stands at 1 euro 655.42 CFA francs. For comparison, a small independent country like Ethiopia has an exchange rate of 60 ETB against the euro. Now, besides all this, France, while utilizing its imperial power, devalues the CFA franc at will without consulting African nations. However, the devaluation of 1994 was the most drastic and devastating. They dropped the value of the CFA franc so much in 1994 that people's buying power got cut in half overnight. The main reason behind this devaluation was the Frankfurt concept. According to this concept, France had to strengthen its currency, the French franc, in the European market, for which it sacrificed the CFA franc by devaluing it by 50% of its value. Now, this decision instantly helped the purchasing power of families in these 14 countries. Imports became so expensive that daily essentials like milk and eggs became unavailable. Due to this entire CFA franc system, the growth of African nations is only declining. But on the other hand, France continues to profit immensely from it. Many of these African countries have rich natural resources, but they haven't benefited much from them. You all know European countries have always had their eyes on Africa, India and Asia, and how much wealth they have looted from these countries. For example, Ivory Coast's cocoa fields are still controlled by France, despite Ivory Coast being the world's largest cocoa producer. Similarly, Niger has vast uranium reserves but French companies have privileged deals there too. There are many stories of such exploitation, and some even happened in recent years. Italian Deputy Prime Minister Mr. Damiano publicly accused France of using its African reserves to pay off its public debt. Although France has denied such claims in the past, the evidence of its economic growth tells a different story. In 1960, France's GDP was $62 billion, but now it's nearly $3 trillion. However, the question remains, did African nations benefit from this growth? Well, never. Responding to growing protests, French President Macron and African leaders signed a deal in 2019, where 14 African countries agreed to adopt a new currency named ECO by 2027. This deal aims to provide relief to African countries, as they will no longer have to deposit their foreign exchange reserves in France. However, experts view this as a symbolic gesture as the currency will still be backed by France. In essence, France retains power despite superficial concessions. The irony is that France, a country that espouses liberty, equality and fraternity as its national heritage, still keeps 14 African countries secretly enslaved. In simple words, French neocolonialism is a clear indicator which still shows the dual nature of Western countries. Their international image is one thing, and the reality is something else. If you've enjoyed our content so far, hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop and be part of our incredible community.